Hey, what's going on here, folks? So I'm assuming you clicked on this video because you saw in the title about the Western Suburbanite or a Fisher Homesteader plow. They're basically the same thing. I believe they're made by Fisher because the pump is actually a Fisher pump with Fisher uh, electronics and things like that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I am going to show you how to much improve this plow and what I what I encountered, what I had just for the first, basically the first few snowstorms on this and where the weak links are, what happens and how you can make them a lot stronger. Anyway, my channel here is Make It Last, and if you're just clicking on this and you want to get straight to the point, well, I'd appreciate it so much if you consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up, comment, and let me know what you think. Maybe you have a YouTube channel, and I can check it out, and I can subscribe to yours, and you can subscribe to me, and maybe in the long run, we can both be considered into the YouTube Partnership Program and maybe make some money down the road. Anyway, I'm not going to keep blabbing. I'm going to spin around, and uh, we'll get to the point here, and I want to say if you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my little videos, and without further ado here we go all right so you're probably clicking on it and you maybe went on the marketplace on facebook or you were on craigslist and or maybe you had a buddy or something and he was upgrading to a full-size pickup and uh maybe it was even just a half ton pickup and he wanted to go upgrade to a bigger plow so anyway it is a fisher homesteader mine is actually the seven foot four inch snow plow <clears throat> there is also a smaller version of that so while I'm telling you on the 7.4 what I did, you may be able to do the similar thing, but it may vary a little bit. Um, first thing we're going to talk about right here real quick is the cutting edge on this plow is originally attached with 7 bolts. So the cutting edge attaches, um, basically attaches to the back. And there's another frame section down the bottom that's made a little bit more sturdy. I'll kind of show you there. So that there... Um, what I first encountered after first, uh, probably it was about a year maybe before I encountered it. Maybe, well, I want to say a year or maybe at that winter when I first got this, probably about, eh, maybe six snowstorms or such. A plow in mine, maybe a couple other neighbors' driveways, something like that. What I actually encountered in rough driveways or gravel or things like that. So out of the seven bolts that were actually on there, they started loosening and they bent and they basically shook their way out of there to the point where the cutting edge was actually almost falling off the plow. So here I am six years later after replacing bolt after bolt, putting Loctite on, I finally drilled seven more holes and I've got 14 holes total. So that's why I say it may vary if you do have a shorter Fisher Homesteader. So that significantly improved this plow. Now the bolts don't come loose. I do have Loctite on them. Um, it's sturdier and I shouldn't have to worry about that. So anyway, that's that. Um, moving on here. The next thing you're going to see is your plow may have a couple of rubber bands right there. So they're actually, um, they're called trip bands. So when this plow hits an obstacle or something, or a little tiny, not an obstacle, like a pole or something like that. But when it hits like a little bit of rough terrain, like you can look and you can see my driveway here and there is uh it's a little bit of dirt and gravel so it's pretty rough and you can actually see the spots where they kind of dug like a little deep a little high a little low i don't know if you can see it exactly with the camera but anyway um what's going to happen is you're going to have these two rubber trip bands on there and from the factory um, from western suburbanite or fisher they're actually going to give you a hollow bar it's going to go across here and these rubber bands are going to connect to it so to make a long story short, what happens is the the rubber or the rubber trip bands are so sometimes they're a lot more stiffer in the colder weather. They will actually bend this bar, and it's not going to bend it like you know to the point where it's going to fold it in half at a ninety degree angle. It's actually just going to bend it just enough so you can see it. So probably like fifteen degree bend in that, and you're going to start to notice it, and you're like, oh, what the hell is going on here? So anyway, how I fix that is I actually put a solid round piece from tractor supply and drilled some holes in it and put the solid piece on there first and it was still on there with the, the rubber trip bands and then uh so after that i got that part of it done and i found i can't tell you like the link or anything like that he's kind of like uh he's just got a little it's not even it's i think it's a website i'd have to check it was a few years ago i bought it i believe it's in taunton mass but the guy actually makes springs the bar the kit and everything it's like 300 dollars for the springs and the bar he doesn't like to separate them but he was i was able to con him into buying both the springs so if you are looking for that comment i'll do a little research and i'll see if i can find it and i can get back to you 
Anyway, um, he makes the springs, he warranties them, he puts the bar on there for like 300 bucks. So if you got to buy these rubber trip span or trip springs that are breaking and they're rubber, they're also like $200 on Amazon. And if you go through Fisher, they're like $300. Ah, I think it was two or $300 a piece from Fisher. Um, don't quote me if I'm wrong there. So that's what I encountered. The bar was bending. The, uh, you know, the rubber trip, well, it's not a commercial plow. They're kind of cheap. So that's that there. Um, the only other, that's basically the only pl problem I've actually had with this plow. I've gotten pretty lucky. I probably abuse this little a little more than it should be. Um, a simple little thing. This cover actually broke on me. So I've got a zip tie holding it on down the bottom. It's actually the second one that broke. I took this one off another plow that someone gave to me. I think I actually, I hit a rough drive, but it was so rough. It actually, it actually pushed the frame into the bumper on my truck. So you may not even encounter that. Um, moving on and basically a quick topic on how to make it last. So this is six years old. And while it's a little dark out here, I'll still kind of give you a quick look. You can see that it's in really, really good condition. There's no rust. I wash it. I wash it after every use. And, you know, some people, maybe they don't have the time to do that or they might just laugh at it. But, hey, I'm making things last year. I also do spray some grease or fluid film in the pivot points right in here. And that seems to keep things freed up pretty good. I spray, like, bolts. I spray the uh, hydraulic cylinders where the bolts go into that. And, um... Another thing, well, I haven't had a problem. There is a center little cheesy bolt that goes down through here. I believe it is a grade eight um, hardened bolt. I went into Abishan and got an extra one just in case because it's really, really small. And I was afraid of that breaking while I was in the middle of plowing. And um, I did get that just in case, but the one that's in there, I've got it greased and it stayed pretty good. So anyway, that's what I've experienced. If you did just pick this up, you're probably, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. It does say right on it, change fluid annually. I do paint it with Rust-Oleum paint. It keeps it from rusting also. Another thing you want to do is if you got it and these aren't already totally rusty, you want to spray some grease or some fluid film on the bolts here. These will seize to the point where you can't move. And then if you go to try to get them off here, they're actually going to break and they're going to spin inside the headlight. So there's another little pointer. <clears throat> Moving on, another thing I do besides painting it and cleaning it and washing it and trying to take care of it, you know, these were almost just about four thousand dollars brand new. Is I do, I actually spray fluid. Yeah, <laughs> I actually spray fluid foam inside this tube here because moisture is going to get in there. And you know, as of just like anything else, or specifically a Toyota Tacoma frame, when moisture, salt, and stuff gets inside there, it's going to cause corrosion. So. Anyway, uh, moving on, I'm going to give you a few action shots or maybe you're just looking at this video to see if a Tacoma can actually plow snow and we'll continue on if we actually do get snow overnight and uh, we'll go from there. All right, what's going on there, folks? Um, good morning. Um, it's, it may not be morning for you, but it's morning for me. It's about just about six o'clock here. And like I said, we were supposed to get a little bit of snow. Um, it's supposed to be eight to 10 inches of heavy wet stuff. And if you look behind me, it's coming down. It's pretty light at the moment. And uh, I'll spin around and show you. We probably got about, yeah, maybe three, four inches. So there's the old taco. And like I said, it's heavy. It's wet. I put my fingers in there and it actually made marks. It's not fluffy. It's real packy. Definitely snowman snow. Um, <clears throat> so here's what we're going to get at. That's not a lot. Like I said, three, four inches. It is heavy. If you do look at the end of the driveway... And kind of tell how it all just from the road plows it actually ro rolled into like balls that's how sticky it is <clears throat> so yeah that's that and uh basically gonna get everything cleaned up here front steps and um gonna get cleaned up in front of the truck around the patio patio area and i don't push the snow into the road so i'm gonna turn around and drive over this probably gonna pack it down pretty good and i'm gonna show you how it plows